At the beginning of this new year, we acknowledge the traditional custodians on the lands wherever we are. Here, it's the Ghana people. We pay respect to their elders, past and present, and extend that respect to Indigenous people who are present with us now. Happy New Year. Welcome to Church Online, and special welcome if you're with us for the first time. It's been another week of rapid change in our world and in our country. And I would think there are possibly a few more online this week, given the uncertainty that we're living with. There are a few families that are part of this service that are isolating at the moment due to being in close contact or due to having COVID. And we have a couple of families in that category, including a large family group, all isolating together. A special welcome to you. You are in our prayers. My name is Lynn have the privilege of being the minister at Adelaide West and I'll be sharing with you today. We're sharing communion in a moment before the message today, so you might like to have some juice and bread or crackers ready. We light this candle today. In this first Sunday of the year as a reminder of Christ's ongoing presence and love constantly with us. As we come into this new year and as we prepare for communion now, we come as we are. That's how God loves us. We are loved and forgiven and there's no need to fear. Come, come as you are. Today we're having communion first, as the first thing that we do together as a community of faith in this new year. It's a symbol of God's love for us. Love is so often expressed and experienced by touch, like a handshake that is so greatly missed at the moment, a hug for a friend or the embrace of someone that we know well. Communion is the way that God touches us. It's a visible sign of God's love and grace, and we experience it together with Christians around the world as a gathered community of virtually connected, connected across time, 
we participate together with Christians today, with Christians from the past, as well as Christians in the future. And so we start 2022 together with communion, drawn here by God's abundant love, experiencing togetherness with God, with one another and all of creation. And it models that togetherness in the journey in the year ahead. We remember how it all began. On the night when Jesus was betrayed by a friend, he sat at supper with his disciples. And while they were eating, he took a piece of bread, gave thanks, broke it, and shared it among them. And he did the same. He gave thanks and passed around a cup of wine from which they all drank. And so we follow the example of Jesus today and we give thanks before sharing. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you our thanks for the invitation to this table. This table that offers your very presence, your unfailing love, your amazing grace, that we may be filled, forgiven, encouraged and sent out again. Thank you that nothing changes your love for us, that your love is constant among the uncertainty of 2021 and 2022 to come. As we look to the east and to the west, we see the wideness of your mercy and grace for each of us. Risen Christ, present with us now, thank you for all that you have done. Today we remember your body broken and a life poured out in the symbols of this communion. We're sorry for the times that we miss the mark, for when we forget you on the journey, when we don't act out of your love with others, when we forget the togetherness of the journey of our lives, we are sorry for when we say, do or think things that separate us from you, from others, or harm your creation. Thank you that these things and all our sins are forgiven. Through your body broken and life poured out, we are set free. Holy God, pour out your spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and juice in front of each of us now, simple symbols from our kitchen, simple symbols from our everyday lives that remind us of the body and blood of Christ. By this act, may we become united to Jesus and become all that you call us to be, attentive and present to the world and to the people within it, until at last your reign of justice and peace comes. We come craving change, change in the world, justice and peace, and change in our lives that nourishes our most inward being. Help us to prepare our hearts and minds for all that needs to change in this world and in ourselves today and in the year ahead. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory is yours forever. Amen. I invite you to join me as we say the Lord's Prayer together. You can do that in your preferred version or in your preferred language. And we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I invite you to take the bread and to tear it apart. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ and a reminder that we are a broken people put back together by God. And the cup that we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ reminding us of the life of Christ. Here in this moment, graced by the spirit of hope and peace, we discover and experience the wonderful love that Jesus has for each of us. And we rejoice that these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God.
I invite you to take and eat the bread, share it around with others in the room if you're with others, remembering Jesus' body broken and his deep love for each of us today and in the year ahead. And as we take the cup, we remember the life that Jesus lived and the life that we are called to live. Loving God, as a community meeting virtually today, scattered across borders, may we be a sign of hope and faith united in community together. May this food, this act, be a reminder in our everyday lives of your deep love for each of us in the year ahead. May it bring comfort amongst uncertainty and may it strengthen us in our love for you and each other. And just as taking communion together is the centrepiece of this service today, may it also be the centrepiece of our lives in the year ahead. Make us your vessels, we pray. Make us your offering. In the crushing, in the pressing, make new wine out of us. Amen. <laughs>
The reading today is from Matthew chapter 2, reading from verses 1 through to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this was what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means at least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen, when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we are. We've reached 2022. We start a brand new year. Somehow the beginning feels different this year. Perhaps a little less carefree than in the past. We're still trying to process global trauma. Global trauma from the last two years. We're unsure what the coming weeks hold for us. Yet alone the 12 months ahead. 2020 started normally enough. We looked forward to the usual things and then 2021 started with us thinking that this global pandemic was through the worst and we would overcome it during the year. And now here at the start of 2022, we've lost all that confidence we had and we're really not sure what the year might bring, especially with escalating COVID numbers and our inability to respond. You know, each year is a journey. And I wonder what the journey ahead will be. The Magi from the East were on a journey. This story finds its way onto Christmas cards. It's a familiar story. So familiar that we write into it what isn't necessarily there. For instance, it's often called the three wise men. But we don't know how many there are. We know there are three gifts. But somehow that became three wise men. And in our minds we're drawing camels, but it doesn't say that there are camels. But it's likely they were riding something in their travelling and it could be, tra- could be camels. And camels are referred to in Isaiah 60, where the camels are linked to gold and incense. And they weren't present on the night of the birth of Jesus. They came some months later as they visited Jesus as a child in his house. The Magi set out on a journey from Persia or southern Arabia to the east of Jerusalem. Magi can be translated as wise men or astrologers. They're the most exotic people in the Christmas story. They get the fancy costumes in silk at Christmas time and in Christmas plays. Vivid colours, gold lining, not like the shepherds or even Joseph wearing tea towels on their heads. The 6th of January, in a few days, is known as Epiphany, at the end of the 12 days of Christmas. It's when the Christmas trees come down, or at least ours does. Epiphany is a moment of sudden or great revelation, or realisation that usually changes you in some way. It comes from the Greek meaning appear, reveal, shine, or give light. For the Magi, they saw the light of the star which leads them to discover the birth of a new hope, a gift to the world, an infant who would himself be called the light of the world. They experienced an epiphany. They saw a star and were compelled to follow and make the journey to find Jesus. For Christians today, 
Epiphany is the day and the season we remember the manifestation of Christ to all the world, including the Gentiles, us, as represented by the Magi in this story. Epiphany comes after Christmas Day when we're often tired of festivities or we're ready to return to routine. It's the new year and filled with new resolve to do whatever it was that we didn't do or didn't achieve last year. Here we are at the start of a new year once again. Each new year we think of possibilities, the hopes we have, the holidays or the travel we'd like to do, the people we'd like to see. But it's also uncertain and, and we don't know what will be possible. In many ways we have a lot less confidence this year than we did at the beginning of last year. But I always think that a new year is a time as good as any, even in the middle of uncertainty, perhaps even more important amidst uncertainty, to think about fresh starts and fresh possibilities, fresh plans, hopes and opportunities. And each year I reflect and journal at this time of year about the year just gone and the year ahead. Now I list all the things I'm thankful for over the previous year, including where I've seen God at work in relationships, the church, family, friendships, events, books, learning and prayer times. It includes where I have seen God in the struggle of life, in the hard times, and this year that includes my health which led to major surgery and several months of recovery. I'm thankful for that journey, even though it wasn't always easy. Then I list the regrets, the challenges and the times of sadness, including people no longer with us, natural disasters, things like pandemics and the things that I found challenging in the year. And I plan for the year ahead, not resolutions as such, more planning and goals, prayers and priorities, practical plans for the year spiritual plans and I think it's useful to do as individuals in connect groups and in all groups in the church. This year I'm writing the words, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart and the conversations I have, the messages I prepare, the meetings I attend, the listening I do, the dreaming, the planning, the administration, may they be acceptable not necessarily perfect or world-changing, acceptable is good enough. May they be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. You know, this time is important. Set aside the time, this week or the next. Perhaps go somewhere to do it, at the beach, in a park. It's a time to look back, a time to be present in this moment as one year passes and another starts and a time to look forward to the coming year. It recognises the new year as part of my journey, our journeys, where we reflect on how we've journeyed with Jesus and how we plan to continue that journey this year. The Magi is a story of a visit of people from another place, foreigners. It shows the life of Jesus matters for the whole world and not just the small community where Jesus lived and died. It shows that other people are aware of and pay attention to the movements of God in the world. The wise men discerned the work of God in the world and came to honour what God was doing in the one they named as the King of the Jews. They journeyed to the Christ child. Despite distance, despite obstacles, they were seeking truth. They left their country, their everyday life to find it. They journeyed to Christ worshipped him and brought gifts, important gifts, costly gifts. Their journey had political consequences. They frightened Herod and he in turn would carry out a dreadful massacre to ease his fear. And being warned in a dream, they returned by another route. They listened to the Spirit and went back another way. They took another path. Are we looking for God, where God is at work in the world? Are we journeying to Jesus? Are we worshipping and bringing our gifts to Jesus, our financial giving, our giving of our lives, our time, our priorities, our energy? Are we attentive to the Spirit, ready to be surprised? As we seek God individually and as a church, 
May we see God and you in surprising and unexpected ways. We started this service with communion. And in many ways, communion is a journey to Christ and with Christ. We draw near to God through communion. We worship and bring our gifts and our lives. We listen for the Holy Spirit's whispers in our lives. Taking communion together is the centerpiece of the service today. May communion be the centerpiece of our lives this year, in this year ahead. A reminder in our everyday lives of God's deep, deep love for us, for each of us every day. May it bring comfort amongst uncertainty and may it strengthen us in our love for God and each other and help us to be attentive to where God is at work in the world. I took this photo on a walk along Linear Park this week and it reminded me of the year ahead. We, we don't know what's ahead. We can't see around the corner or further up the path. We journey into the unknown, but we do know the love of God is with us at every step. We do know that closeness that we feel when we take communion, the visible sign of God's love and grace is with us as we journey into 2022. And as communion is a communal act with God and with others, we experience togetherness with God, one another and all of creation. We know that the path that we walk is also walked by and with others. May you know God's love and grace closely in 2022. Amen. Let's pray together. God of compassion, we bring our prayers to you for all the precious gifts we receive, the moments of beauty, love from family and friends, food from the earth, encounters that cultivate hope. Receive our gratitude for all this and more. Gracious God, at the start of a new year, we bring you our hopes for the world and for its peoples. We bring our prayers to you for all those we have concern for, lives burdened by loss or heartache, those struggling with illness or pain, countries devastated by violence or conflict, countries and communities struggling with COVID, all those carrying hidden sorrows. Lord God, grant strength and healing, we pray. We bring our prayers to you for all those who, like the Magi, are searching for something, some for new meaning, some for the right path, some for community, some for your presence. Loving God, grant a kind and guiding light, we pray. We bring these prayers to you, along with all those which remain unspoken, trusting that you have received them with mercy and grace as pilgrims who journey. We keep our hearts open to the transformation of the journey and the transformation of giving warm welcome. And now for a new year prayer. God of all time, help us enter the new year quietly, thoughtful of who we are to ourselves and to others, mindful that our steps make an impact and our words carry power. May we walk gently. May we speak only after we have listened well. Creator of all life, help us to enter this new year reverently, aware that you have endowed every creature and plant, every person and habitat with beauty and purpose. May we regard the world with tenderness. May we honour rather than destroy. Lover of all souls, as we enter this new year joyfully, willing to laugh and dance and dream, remembering our many gifts with thanks and looking forward to blessings yet to come. 
May we welcome your lavish love. May we cast off the small vindictive God our fears have made and may the grace and peace of Christ bless each person now and in the days ahead. In the name of Jesus, who is with us everywhere we go. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place, for the way you have revealed your love and grace, and as we've taken time to listen for your word, we pray our lives will demonstrate we've heard. Take these feet, baby. We've taken time to listen for your word. We pray our lives will demonstrate we've heard. Take these feet to me. Everywhere we go, God goes before us, watches behind us, and walks beside us. We hope that you've experienced that in this service today. Thank you for joining us. If you would like prayer, you can press the prayer button if you're watching live, or send us an email, and we would love to be praying with you and for you. We continue to bring our offerings, our financial giving, as well as our time and our energy and our gifts and we pray that they will be used to share God's deep, deep love with all in the streets around us and beyond. As you journey into 2022, look for God at work in the world. May communion be the centrepiece of your life in the year ahead, a reminder in our everyday lives of God's deep love for each of us every day, bringing comfort amongst uncertainty everywhere we go. May the grace and the kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship, friendship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you throughout this new year. Amen. Blessings on your week. Jesus, breathe.